A cataract is a cloudy lens inside your eye that we will all develop over time. There are certain factors that may predispose you to cataracts earlier on, such as genetics, certain medications, certain conditions like diabetes. Cataracts can also be affected by exposures. Even if you do everything possible to prevent cataracts, most of us will develop a visually significant cataract that we probably want to address in our lifetime. The right time to do cataract surgery varies from person to person. It really depends on what your visual needs are. The general consensus is that it is time to get cataract surgery when you are at a point where you are struggling to do the things that you want to or need to do because of your vision. At that point, it would be wise to pick a cataract surgeon in your area and get a consultation. A cataract consultation is slightly different from a regular eye exam. Your provider will be doing the entire eye exam, including checking for glasses to see what your best corrected vision is. Your provider will also be getting some testing to look at the shape of the front part of the eye or the cornea, as well as the health of the back part of the eye or the retina. This testing is very important when it comes to talking to you about cataracts to make sure there are no other eye processes or diseases affecting your vision, as well as to make sure that your provider can guide you to the best possible lens choice for you if you decide you want to proceed with your surgery. The first test that your provider will get is called a topography. This is a test that looks at the shape of your cornea to see if you have astigmatism. You have high astigmatism when you're your cornea is shaped less like a sphere and more like a football. If you have a significant amount of astigmatism, your provider may want to talk to you about the possibility of a lens that is put inside the eye during cataract surgery to replace your natural lens that offsets some of that astigmatism on the cornea and this is called a toric lens. Another important reason to get a topography is to check the health of your cornea. There is a very common corneal disease called keratoconus, and surprisingly, a lot of people have keratoconus or have early stages of keratoconus, but just never had symptoms. Really important that your provider knows if you have this because there may be certain types or brands of lenses that you may not be a great candidate for if this is detected. Another important test is to get a picture called an OCT of the retina. An OCT is a high resolution ultrasound that looks at the layers of the back of the retina, specifically the center part of the retina called the macula. And the reason why this is important is that some people have some subtle scar tissue behind the retina. And while that scar tissue may not in itself be affecting vision, that presence of that scar tissue, especially if you have enough of that scar tissue, may sway your provider against recommending certain specialty lenses such as multifocal lenses. These tests are all very important to help your provider help guide you to picking the best type of lens and best brand of lens for your cataract surgery. During the exam, your provider will be not only measuring the cataracts and planning the potential cataract surgery based on the exam, but also looking for things like dry eye. It is important that if you have severe dry eye that this is treated before the surgery because some of the other measurements that we need to get later, such as our lens calculations, can really be affected by terrible surface issues. Another important component of this appointment is meeting your surgeon, making sure that person is a good fit for you, and discussing what your choices are when it comes to surgical procedures and lenses. Your insurance company will provide a basic cataract surgery a surgery where all the steps are done manually by hand. The lens that's placed inside the eye is a standard lens that is essentially the same power throughout, does not correct astigmatism, does not focus light at different parts of the eye, and will overall get you good vision. Your provider may recommend premium options based on what your refractive goals are and what your eye is like. I made a few video about lenses that you can watch for more detail. Some common premium lenses that I'd offer to my patients are if a patient has a lot of astigmatism on their cornea, I talk to them about a lens called a toric lens, which has astigmatism correction to offset some of that cornea astigmatism. Another common premium premium lens are lenses that are presbyopia correcting lenses or lenses that actually give you some range in vision. 
And this is great for patients who hate wearing reading glasses. It's just very important that we refer to some of the previous testing done in clinic to make sure that you are actually a good candidate for this type of lens. When I talk to my patients about cataract surgery, I like to discuss things like logistics, risks to the procedure, including any risks of complication or infection, as well as possible side effects of the surgery. The provider will have gotten all their measurements to measure out a lens that is the right type and the right power for you. If your provider has recommended that you start treatments for dry eye, medicated or over the counter, I advise that you follow your provider's instructions as best you can. While some providers will offer dropless cataract surgery where you do not need to have drops put in before or after the surgery, most providers in the US still require medicated drops and a lot of times these medications are started one to three days before surgery. Make sure that you receive your drops and have them in your hands as soon as you can. Make sure that you know ahead of time what your drop regimen is going to be before and after surgery. Follow all those instructions. On the day of surgery, make sure you follow all your provider's instructions about not eating. At our surgery center, we advise that our patients not eat six to eight hours before their surgery. Some sips of water, some black coffee without cream or sugar is okay. If you have any questions about the timing and what you can and cannot eat before your surgery, make sure you contact your provider's office so that they can clarify those instructions for you. The day of surgery can be a bit nerve-wracking. Every clinic, hospital, or surgery center is a little different. At our surgery center, our patients come in an hour before their scheduled surgery, which is enough time to fill out paperwork. The nurses at our surgery center bring you back, get some medical history and intake, and start putting in dilating drops. We want your eye to be very dilated by the time you go into surgery. You will have an anesthesia provider, either an anesthesiologist or a CRNA, who will get you comfortable and relaxed for your surgery. Some providers will actually completely numb the eye by putting an injection of medication around the eye so you do not see or feel anything. Most providers will give you a lot of numbing drops as well as what we call topical medication such as jellies and medication inside the eye to kind of numb everything as they go along. The surgery itself takes about five to 10 minutes. My patients are under conscious sedation, which means that they're gonna be awake during the surgery, but most likely not very aware. We will give you more or less sedation depending on how you're responding to the medication. After the surgery, it's important that you have someone with you because after some of that anesthesia, it's normal to feel a little bit lightheaded, dizzy, and tired, and you will be a higher fall risk. If you've had anesthesia of any kind, it's not safe to drive home by yourself. Most likely, your provider will have an eye shield or a patch over your eye. I recommend that you keep that on for the day just so you don't accidentally bump or rub your eye. You can take the patch or shield off to put in your eye drops as instructed. Overnight, you're gonna wanna wear that eye shield for at least one week in order to protect your eye from any inadvertent bumps or rub. Other restrictions are no bending over for a few days. That's because when you bend over, there's a lot of pressure around the head and around the eyes. Your provider has made very, very small wounds on your cornea that are actually not closed with stitches. So we don't want too much pressure to open up those wounds or cause any lens displacement. Also, we recommend no heavy lifting more than 20 pounds, no swimming, and that includes hot tubs, saunas, spas, anything like that. The night of surgery, it is normal to have a mild headache, maybe some foreign body sensation, irritation. It's not uncommon to have a bloody looking eye the first few days as well. If you have any sudden loss of vision, sudden pain, terrible headaches, it's really important that you call your provider because there are certain things like extremely high eye pressures, infections, retinal detachments, or a severe inflammatory reaction that we would want to know about right away. Most surgeons have on-call providers who you can reach even overnight if you have any acute symptom or anything that doesn't seem normal. If your symptoms are concerning, your provider or one of their colleagues will come in and check on your eye. You made it to the post-operative day one appointment. During this appointment, your provider is going to take off your patch or shield and check things like your vision, your eye pressure, 
and your wounds to make sure everything is sealed shut. If your vision isn't perfect at the post-operative day one appointment, you're okay. It's completely normal for the eye to take a few days to completely heal. And some people actually are slower healers and can take up to one to three weeks in order to completely recover their vision. During this appointment, your provider will give you some tailored last minute instructions about drops and restrictions. And this is a great time to bring up any last minute questions about the post-operative period. A few weeks after surgery, you'll be good to get prescription glasses if you need it. After that, go out and enjoy your new vision. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content about eye health, disease, and surgery, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.